Among the many trucks built in the 1950s and 60s, the Praga V3S stood out for its remarkable off-road ability and simple, rugged design. It served equally well in the Army and in civilian life. The truck was produced for an incredible 32 years without major changes and was exported to many countries across Europe and beyond. What's more, you can still spot a V3S here and there even today, over half a century after it first appeared. And now, let's dive into the story of this unique machine. In the early 20th century, Europe's fascination with the first automobiles was so strong that two major Prague companies decided to join forces and start building cars. On March 27, 1907, the first Czech Moravian Engineering Works and the Frantisek Ringhofer Company founded the Prague Automobile Factory. At first, they had no original designs of their own, so production began under licenses from well known firms. In Prague, they assembled passenger cars from Izada Fraschini, Sharon, Renault, as well as trucks from Dacoman. But in 1911, a talented engineer named Frantisek Keck joined the company, and soon he was behind dozens of original designs that defined the factor's lineup. Trucks became the company's main focus, and with good reason. When fully loaded Praga trucks with trailers completed a 2,000-kilometer test route without a single breakdown and won the Austro-Hungarian Army's competition, it was a true breakthrough. As a result, the military placed a huge order, requiring that 30% of its updated fleet be Praga trucks. During World War I, work on improving the trucks never stopped. And in the difficult post-war years, when the country faced a severe fuel shortage, Praga's engineers created their own alternative fuel, Pragoline. It cost half as much as gasoline and was most likely made from low-grade oil fractions, alcohols, and other components. What mattered most, however, was that Pragoline worked, and it helped replace scarce and expensive gasoline. Between the two world wars, the Praga automobile plant became the largest car manufacturer in Czechoslovakia, significantly outpacing its competitors, Tatra and Škoda, in production capacity. Praga vehicles were known for their superior quality and reliability. One telling fact about their technical excellence is that Praga engines used a forced oil circulation lubrication system earlier than their rivals. By the 1930s, Praga cars were already equipped with low-pressure tires, centralized chassis lubrication, thermostats, and trucks were fitted with seven and even eight-speed gearboxes. To make life easier for bus drivers, Praga purchased a license in England for the Wilson semi-automatic transmission and launched its production in a dedicated workshop. On the eve of World War II, Praga's reputation reached new heights, and large-scale modernization of its production facilities made the company a clear leader on the domestic market while also fueling its international ambitions. The German occupation of Czechoslovakia became a turning point in Praga's history. The Germans had little concern for Czech production. Following their usual tradition, they seized everything possible, nationalized what they couldn't outright seize, and forced the factory to produce tank engines, all-terrain vehicles, and parts for German machines. Meanwhile, Allied bombs rained down on the plant, destroying it almost completely just a few months before the end of the war. Rebuilding the factory after the war was no easy task, and developing new models was initially out of the question. The company gradually returned to producing pre-war designs. But in 1951, with the beginning of the Cold War, the government ordered a new military truck. It had to be three-axle, highly capable off-road, simple, and reliable exactly the kind the military favored. The deadlines were extremely tight. Just four months were given for documentation. By 1952, three prototypes were built and tested, after which the project was immediately approved for mass production. No design changes were needed. The truck turned out perfectly right from the start. The concept behind the Praga V3S proved to be very successful. It was powered by an air-cooled diesel engine developed by Tatra. In fact, it was essentially half of the famous V12 from the Tatra 111, sharing many components and already well-proven in production. The engine was mounted behind the front axle, which improved weight distribution and off-road performance. 
With a displacement of 7.4 liters, it produced 98 horsepower, an impressive torque available at low RPMs, making the truck extremely capable in rough terrain. One of the most unusual design features was the hood. When opened, it looked as if the engine wasn't there at all, because it was actually inside the cabin, between the driver and passenger. From the outside, you could only access auxiliary components. This layout reduced the cabin to two seats, but placed the heavy engine within the wheelbase, improving balance and off-road ability. The transmission was equally interesting. A four-speed gearbox combined with a two-speed auxiliary unit that also worked as a transfer case. In total, the driver had eight forward gears and two reverse. All wheels were fitted with portal axles for greater ground clearance. The rear axles had lockable differentials, and the front axle drive could be engaged when needed. The rated payload was three tons off-road, but on paved roads, the truck could carry over five tons, and on short trips, even more than six. It could also tow trailers weighing up to four tons. The top speed was limited to 60 kilometers per hour, but for military use, this was perfectly acceptable. The frame of the V3S was strong yet flexible, deliberately designed to twist and increase suspension travel, a crucial advantage for an off-road vehicle. The Czechoslovak Army was by far the main user of the V3S, and the truck served there for decades, well into the 2000s, when it was gradually replaced by modern Tatra trucks. For many years, the V3S acted as a true multi-purpose platform, flatbed cargo truck, radio communication vehicles, mobile headquarters, ambulances, fuel tankers, repair workshops, and even chassis for radar units and surface-to-air missile systems. Export went mainly to other Warsaw Pact countries. The V3S was used by the armies of Poland, East Germany, Hungary, Romania, and Bulgaria, as well as in Cuba, Vietnam, and several African states that received Eastern Bloc military aid. Thanks to its simple design, many armies kept the V3S in service for a surprisingly long time. In the Czech Republic and Slovakia, some were officially retired only in the early 2000s. And in parts of the developing world, these trucks can still be found in active use today. There were also many civilian modifications. Based on the V3S chassis, Praga produced mobile cranes, timber trucks, tankers, and various vans. In 1956, a purely civilian version appeared under the designation S5T. Unlike the military model, it had a 4x2 layout and a higher payload capacity of 5 tons. The cab was redesigned with more refined civilian styling, making it look less rugged and more suitable for everyday use. The S5T became a true workhorse of Czechoslovakia's economy, widely used in construction, agriculture, and municipal services. From 1953 to 1964, Praga V3S trucks rolled off the assembly line of the main Praga plant. But in 1964, the fate of the company changed. The government decided to repurpose the factory, turning it into one of the largest gearbox suppliers in the Eastern Bloc. Truck production was transferred to the nearby Avia plant, also located in Prague, where it continued for almost two decades until the early 1980s. When the future of the model was reconsidered in the 1980s, engineers tried several updates. The first appeared at the beginning of the decade with the M1 version. The engine's displacement was slightly increased and power output grew modestly. Otherwise, it remained essentially the same V3S. In 1984, the upgraded M2 appeared. Externally, it was almost identical to the original but it featured improved brakes, more reliable electrical equipment, and some refinements to the engine. This version was built in small batches until 1990. In practice, the original Praga V3S remained in production from 1953 to 1985, with its descendants lasting several years longer. One might think that the end of the Cold War and the collapse of the Eastern Bloc would seal the fate of such vehicles. Demand for simple and inexpensive trucks did not disappear. In 1995, 42 years after the debut of the first V3S, a new modification appeared, the M6. Visually, the sixth Praga changed little. 
The round headlights were replaced by square ones, and the cab received a minor facelift. The real improvements were inside. New seats, an updated dashboard, and better heating. Under the hood, the famous air-cooled diesel remained, only slightly modernized. Exact production figures for the M6 are unknown, but it was likely built in small numbers. The Czech military gradually shifted to imported Western European trucks. While the civilian market was flooded with used foreign vehicles after the borders opened, the decline of the Praga V3S came quietly. There were no farewell ceremonies, no press articles, no official announcements about the end of production. The trucks simply vanished from assembly lines and streets. During the 1990s and 2000s, the Praga company survived mainly through repairing its own vehicles and experimenting with small-scale motorcycle production, though none of these projects achieved significant success. Only after 2010 did the brand unexpectedly return to the spotlight, but in an entirely new field. Praga began building racing cars, entering international competitions, and offering machines for track days. Thus, Praga has gone through an incredible transformation, from heavy military trucks to modern racing cars. And while the legendary V3S belongs to the past, the brand's name lives on, albeit in a completely different role. At the same time, V3S trucks can still be found in remote areas, working hard in construction, forestry, and other demanding jobs. Off-road enthusiasts also keep these machines alive taking them on extreme expeditions that prove the old workhorse still has plenty of life left in it. <laughs>